to voice their concerns uh, with the goings on in the ANC. Uh, this after former presidents Thabo Mbeki, Kalema Motlante, and uh, Jacob Zuma took to the public and criticized uh, the incumbent uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa's leadership style as not being the best, including the issue of uh, the Palapala farm in Limbobo. ANC spokesperson Bule Mabe says, as former presidents, they should know that the National Executive Committee, the NEC, is uh, the best platform to raise these concerns about the president. Our reporter, Kenny Mapanga, has uh, more for us. Well, good afternoon to you and the viewers at home. Still coming to you live from the Latuli House, where the ANC has concluded a briefing on a number of issues. The three issues that I'd like to highlight is the BGM's extension to the 7th of November, the current developments in the city of Johannesburg, as well as uh, statements or former utterances by former presidents of the ANC, uh, former President Jacob Zuma, as well as former President Tabombegi. To help us unpack this further, I'm joined by ANC national spokesperson, Mr. Pule Mabe, who's going to just give us uh, further details regarding some of these issues that have taken place. Um, can we start with the city of Johannesburg, uh, Mr. Mabe? The court has made a clear ruling that that process was not constitutionally valid. Are there any concerns going forward by Lutuli House? I know that you say that there are developments with the city and the region taking care of that matter. We see that uh, Dada Morera has just put out a statement saying that he will step aside for now and continue to um, update the nation as developments continue to happen. But as Lutuli House, the uh, judgment is clear that that process was constitutionally flawed. What is Lutuli House's response to that? Well, as you are saying that uh, Comrade Dada, the chairperson of the ANC in the Joburg region, has already put out a statement. Uh, it's, it's, it's better to rather leave this to our comrades in the region to attend to. It was more, if it was more of a process issue, they will, have, they will deliberate on the judgment and formulate a position. I can tell you now, we are really just uh, suspending the inevitable. If, if, if you convene council tomorrow to discuss the same motion, you will arrive at the same outcomes. You are just basically delaying the delivery of services to the people of Johannesburg. It's not like, because the DA did not win. I mean, they have got to understand this. It doesn't matter how many times they go to court. They didn't win. They are governing Johannesburg through a coalition. And if those relations in that coalition partnership no longer exist, it means they cease to be a governing party in the city. They did not win the majority of votes to constitute a government in the city. They can go to court. The court can say it's a temporary victory. It's a temporary victory. I mean, if, if it's really process issues, I don't know what the position of the ANC would be in the region because I was here with yourselves. Let's say it's, a, it's an issue of process, as the court has said. It simply takes the speaker of council to put up right, a, a rightful processes where there were gray areas, resolve those, convene a meeting. They will arrive at the same outcomes. It's not like they will arrive at different outcomes. Remember, this, uh, the, the speaker of Joburg is no longer the speaker. The DA is no longer the speaker. I mean, uh, Vasco is no longer the speaker. So it doesn't matter what you do. You know, the, the only person who can be a mayor for days or hours, it's only uh, Palazzi. If, 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 if they don't decide to appeal the decision, whatever decision that they arrive at. But it's a temporary victory. So if, if this organization is so interested in governing uh, the people of Joburg, why would they do things that are going to suspend service delivery? Lastly, um, on the issue of the former presidents of the ANC and their utterances regarding the Palapala saga, you stated that um, you still need to engage these leaders um, and interpret further what they were saying. But um, I would like to clarify, what, what do you need to interpret further, as those statements were quite clear by former presidents? Well, I'm not saying we need to interpret. I said, looking at the statements coming out of our provinces, it was clearly an issue of how the different statements had been interpreted. Because all of these different leaders did not say the same thing. They did not hold the same brief. I refused to enter into the merits and demerits of what would have been said. But uh, President Beiki spoke in a different event. Uh, President Zuma spoke uh, uh, in a press briefing. Uh, the Deputy President Khalima was also addressing a different event. So it depends how the structure of the ANC responding interpreted those statements. 
because the statements I've seen are not the same. You know, there's a statement from Limpopo, there's a statement from Guazulu Natal, and there's a statement from the Northwest. All of them are really interpreting the utterances differently and conveying different positions. Hence, we are saying there is a need for us to coordinate our work and the messages we deposit out there. And you've stated that the ANC wants to wait for processes to conclude before um, rushing to deal with this Palapala Pala saga. But is the ANC not feeling pressure all around to immediately attend to this issue, despite the processes that are ongoing right now? Well, there is an ANC process already of the Integrity Commission. President Ramaphosa volunteered to appear before the Integrity Commission to deposit and provide a, a clarity that may be needed. So we're comfortable with that process. We cannot set out organizational processes and also say members of the ANC or individual cadres can volunteer to appear or can be invited. When these individual cadres take such kind of steps, we then act to criminalize them. We can't do that. You know, it's like saying comrades of the ANC must cooperate with the process of state capture. After they've cooperated, we say, hey, you and you are now wrong. But you said they must cooperate. Imagine if they did not cooperate. It was out of them cooperating with the process, the clarity they provided, which worked to empower the work of the commission. So when our cadres cooperate with processes and they submit and subject themselves to our own pronouncements, we, we, we ought to commend them for such actions because it, it's a revolutionary act. It's a comradely conduct. All right, we have run out of time. Thank you so much. That was ANC National Spokesperson, Bule Mawe, just uh, wrapping up some of the issues they've discussed in the LASIS briefing here at the Latuli House ahead of the National Elective Conference in December. Over to you in studio. Thanks very much to Kenny Mapanga there for us. Uh,